make him infamous. Welcome back to another episode of The Jake Williams Show. I am your host, Jake Williams, and this is a special episode because I will be joined by a special guest to talk about a video game that turns 10 years old in a couple days. We're going to be talking about the game Infamous, and joining me is someone that I've always been good friends with. I don't know how to say this. It sounds weird. Uh, Adam is my resident comic book guy, superhero guy, Adam Generet. Hey, hey everyone. And uh glad to be here. Well thanks, bud. Yeah. Even though we're at someone else's home. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we work with what we got here. Um yeah, we're gonna be talking about Infamous PlayStation three exclusive that came out in two thousand nine and uh it was a weird game for me because it was a game that I didn't if this is gonna sound weird, but it was one of those games where in the moment I didn't realize how much I really loved it until mm-hmm. I stopped and thought it was the same other thing that I ran into um, with Fallout at this time because this this was my first job that I had was when we met, right? Right. And this was the time as a high schooler, I have all this income and no bills. So, right, so you're going to buy these video games. I was games. buying video games like every week. And they, a lot of the times they're games I don't even think I liked, but I just I had all this money to buy these video games. And Infamous was a game that I'd followed for a while because it was on the cover of Game Informer. Yeah. And that was at the time when I had a subscription to Game Informer, which I miss. I should get back into that. But uh, it's expensive. It's like 20 bucks. Well, the magazine things are dying, man. You don't want to... Well, they, they do it digital, too. So. Oh. It's on, yeah, it's on, my, it's on my phone. Yeah, <laughs> Kindle, phone, whatever. We have some dogs barking in the background. If you hear that, we apologize. Um, Again, we're at a guest location. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I've been following that game for a while. I'm kind of dominating this. So uh, what was your experience with Infamous? Well, see, the funny thing is um, I love Infamous. It's definitely one of my top five games, but I would not have played it if it wasn't for you because you came to me when we were at work that, at the Ambassador, that really crappy dietary aid job that we shared. <laughs> I was lurking like two and a half hours. Yeah, a day. That was, that was your shift. But you know what? Again, I made enough money to buy video games, so that's all that I really wanted the job for. And uh, you came over, and you told me all about this video game, told me how fun it was, that you were having a good time. You spoiled the fucking ending. <laughs> I tried to tell you before. I said, I'm going to spoil this. But... but the thing is, I didn't even play until about three, four months later, and that's only because I was at a different friend's house, Jesse, and he owned it because he did what you did. He bought video games. Right. And Jesse was a rich guy, so he could... Yeah, his family had money. <laughs> and um, so I'm there playing it while he's out, I think, on a date or something. And I'm like, holy shit, this is actually really fun. So then, of course, um, I beat one side at Jesse's house. And then I go out and buy it, and I play the other side. And eventually, I actually got the uh, the platinum trophy or whatever it's called. You actually platinum that? Yep. <clears throat> I did it with both of the infamous. Not Second Son. I did not like Second Son as much. I keep telling myself I'm going to platinum Spider-Man, but I never do. I did that. It's not hard. It's a very easy <laughs> platinum, but I just keep forgetting to do it. I'm actually playing through it on the hardest difficulty right now. But uh, You know what's funny is you would never play Dead Space if it wasn't for Jesse and me yep. hyping up the game and to tell you to play it. So my I actually dictated a lot of your video game tastes. You really did. <laughs> At least in the uh, PS3 era. Yeah, and the funny part was, I mean, I had it. I had the PS3. <laughs> I just didn't really play it. Yeah. I had it in Uncharted was another one uh, Jesse got me into. Yeah. Uh, it was really funny is, uh, like I said, I'd been following it on Game Informer, and I remember reading it, and this was one of those times when this was a very... I was very impressionable because that was, again, this is the first time where I had been playing video games for a while at this point, but I never had my own income. Right. So I was always, when it's something got the cover of Game Informer, this is the best uh, compliment I could give that publication. If it ever got on the cover in Game Informer, I was going to buy it. That's what would happen. Just because, oh, I've got the money, I'm going to buy this game. Right. And yeah, pretty much any game for, oh, I don't know, 
probably three or four issues when they had it on the cover. I was like, oh, buying that game, buying this game. And yeah, usually it was a good. It was a right, good most of the, yeah, <laughs> most of the time they'd cover a really good game. So this is which was interesting to me. This game is made by the guys that did the Sly Cooper series. Yep, and. When you think it's it's very similar to me with Naughty Dog because they they did Crash Bandicoot and they make things like Uncharted, Uncharted or The Last of Us and you're like holy shit these yeah. people could do that. Then. Well, if if you look at it, I never played uh, Crash Bandicoot, but if you look at uh, their very other, difficult their other yeah I heard that <laughs> the other cartoon series that they do um, Jack and Daxter that one got dark too. Yeah, Naughty Dog did that too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, these guys make this and. It struck me right away because it was a great cover because it was Cole McGrath, the main character, with his arms, he's standing, his arms are out, and there's lightning, white lightning coming from like every side of the, the cover. Jesus much? That's, yeah, kind of what I was going for. <laughs> and I, it got me, man, because I was like, whoa, what is this? And then reading the, the preview articles about mm-hmm. it, and I was just like, oh, man, I can't. F-. And I was following that game for a while, and so I was all, if there's anything on YouTube, I was like, oh shit, what's this? It's like, right. I was getting super nerdy with it, and it was so funny because we had not met yet, so I couldn't tell you about it, because like, <laughs> you probably would have bought it day one if I described if I, it. If I, I really knew about it, yeah. Yeah, and so, yeah, I just, I was just watching trailer, trailer, and I bought it fucking day one, and I was like, let's go, because I think it was on a Friday, right? and I just got paid. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's kind of the rest is history, and that, what I was saying is I didn't realize it in the moment where I was playing this game, and we're going to get into the story. Spoilers for a 10-year-old game, by the way. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, not even just so much the story. It's just, it was those things where it's just so addicting about an open world. It was just checking the boxes. And I was the like, open this world is fun. Was, the open world was fun. Um, the the moves, I love the moves. The yeah. fact that... The uh, grenades and the yep. shields and stuff like that. That was so cool. Hover. Yeah, so you could feel like, and Iron Man just came out like the year before, yeah. so you could feel like Iron Man. Yeah, it's yeah, it was, it was it's pretty cool. And the open world environment, it's actually done pretty well. Yeah, I mean. There were a couple glitches. Well, and I mean, it's the usual things that happen with open world games where it can you think it's kind of competitive because of the, uh, the it's the same kind of side missions that you're doing. Right, and I hate that, but. That's any open world game, though. Yep. And and Spider-Man even, just did it. Yeah, even yeah, Spider-Man, Batman games, they all did that. Those super, it's pretty common for superhero games. Yeah, I think they did that in um, Prototype 2, but I can't remember. I remember Prototype 1 came at the same time this did. Yep, and there was a competition, because I remember it was like, who can, make, uh, who can make your opponent's protagonist look more gay? <laughs> so they put Cole on a, um, the guys who made Prototype put Cole on a unicorn and gave him a skirt. And they posted that on the the contest. I think yeah. it might have been Game Informer or something. But must have been during like Pride Month or something. I think so. Just some kind of thing. Like that. That's funny. I didn't even know that it happened. Yeah, yeah. And what's funny is Infamous ultimately won out because I had PS3, so I could have played both. And I think Infamous just won out because of the Game Informer cover, really. But I think that's a good point. And I think it's a. I honestly think Infamous is a much better game than Prototype. I tr- yeah, I beat both Prototypes and. I did not like them that much. I mean, the story's kind of cool. Um, I like the cutscenes. I didn't like their open world. It was just, it was too dark. I mean, I know that's kind of what they're going yeah, you for. you like brutally murdering people in those games. Yeah. Where Infamous, you, could, you probably could, I mean, if you want to, you could suck the life out of people. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. You that can is, shock them. That's fucked up. And we'll get to that. But, um, yeah, I just think this is just, I don't know. It's so much to talk about. And uh, let's just jump ahead into the story. And that's when we're spending most of this conversation, even right. though we just went like 10 minutes gushing about it before. We <laughs> um, so thank you, Game Informer. So we're going to work a little bit backwards. Again, spoilers for a 10-year-old game, I guess. But <laughs> we're going to spoil the whole story of the first Infamous because we're celebrating its 10-year anniversary. Yep. Um, well, how did you feel about it, even though I spoiled it? Which is hilarious because I had uh, there was a brief period of time where I would spoil things for Adam unintentionally. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I think I took... I picked it up from you. Yeah. I did that with you Grace. do that a lot. You do that even you even spoiled parts of Endgame. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Grace. That movie sucks. You can't talk about that movie unless somebody sees it. You really can't. The funny thing is, Grace said that that would have been the part that she would, would have cried on. Huh? <laughs> so anyway, uh, the the how did you feel about the ending? Because the the end of the the game, I love the ending. You find out that 
the villain, Kessler, is you from the future who came back to make you strong enough to face the, the, beast. the beast, which was the setup for the sequel. And uh, how did you feel about that? You said you liked it, right? I loved it, yeah. Um, honestly, I think you wouldn't have seen it coming if you hadn't had it spoiled. Right. Because I remember <laughs> you did, you told me that you didn't see it coming and whatnot. And the, the funny part was I kind of got you back on that one because... Uh, when I finally did play it and beat it, I was like, yeah, I totally called the ending. And you forgot that you spoiled it for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-uh. laughs> uh, But anyway, yeah, I love I loved that ending. I thought it was really great. The final battle, I love because it's challenging enough. To, but it's still beatable. Right. It's challenging enough to actually reward you with the ending. Right. It's and, not an easy fight. And it's not too easy. It's not too hard. I mean, there was times when I was like, okay, fuck this game. Yeah, there were times I did have to But uh, yeah, I walk want away. that in the final boss. I feel like that's lost in a lot of games where mm -hmm. it, they put so much into the, the the second act, the middle chunk of the game, that by the time you get to the third act, it's not rewarding. Again, you might hear some dog barks in the background. <laughs> just giving you a heads up. Uh, I, I agree. I loved it too. And I there and we'll talk about this in a second. But there there were legitimate moments that caught me off guard with like, oh, this I'm really in love with this game and how impactful the story was because the twist I was like what yeah and then by the end of it you're like that, I thought it was really fucking cool like it was such a cool ending I was I, like oh shit I love the fact that when he's explaining it like when he gets he puts the mind thing in him and shows him the thing yeah. they don't outwardly tell you that it's cold they explain like half of the in the cut and he shows and the, what's, it, what flipped it is when the music swells up and they stop it and he's holding the picture and he goes it was a picture of me with Zeke at our, at our wedding with Zeke as our best man and at this point in the game, Trish is already dead. And yeah. you're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. That hit me in the... I was like, dude, what? Yeah, it was kind of mind-blowing. I, I thought it was great. Um, the characters that you meet are really cool. Um, I mean, I think every single character, the big ones at least, are pretty fleshed out. You know, the second one, well, briefly, I mean, I'm kind of going to go in and out with that. But the second one has a little bit lighter tone, literally. It does. <laughs> Even the city is not gray. It's <laughs> yellow. It's New Orleans. Yeah. But it's a lighter tone. And it does have darker moments. But this first game is dark, man. Well, it's like what you told me um, when Infamous 2 came out. Cole was Batman in Infamous. And it's more Spider-Man in Infamous 2. He's funny. He's joking. In Infamous... He's kind of, he's a, even though he's a good guy and you're doing good things, he's still kind of a dick. <laughs> he's kind of a dick, yeah. He's trying to win back Trish. Um, he takes advantage of Zeke, but Zeke's also a fuck up in this one. Yeah. Well, it's also like this whole game span, and this, why, this annoys me that these Arkham games didn't do this. The whole game spans over 21 days, which to me is a much more believable story than doing all the things I did in Arkham Knight in one night. Yeah, like, like, why didn't they? Because I love the idea that it's it's over like a month. And oh, I get it, Arkham Knight one night. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Uh, no, and but that's the thing too. The cutscenes are so well done in this game. Well, and they they're very stylized. And I, I mean, love that unique. it looks like a comic book, and it's like that two D two D and a half, like was it two point five D, where it's kind of three D, but it's also a two D. It's a motion comic, right? And that was those those were so fucking cool. That was one of my cool. probably my favorite part about the games, other than obviously the gameplay. But I was like always excited when I got to see a cutscene because they were so well done. Now some of the things did get repet uh, some of the things did get repetitive. Um, I for one used to hate the sewer missions where you had to go get a new power. Oh yeah, I did the the like the power grid things. We had to restore power to the districts. Yeah, I yeah. did not like that either. Yeah, I hated that, and then. It's just like it happens. I mean, I understand. <laughs> they didn't get the powers. I might have said that already. I'm not sure, but whatever. Um, yeah. You can't be a god the whole game. Right. That won't be fun. Right. I mean, if you step up and uh, you, you have all the powers in the very first fight, what's the point? Right. I mean, with the exception of uh, Infamous 2, where that literally is what happens. Yeah. And then, and with these games, like with video games, what's cool about that is you're. you're Character progression literally means two things. You're progressing as a as the character, but you're also, you know, progressing in the game and, and leveling up right. and stuff like that. Um, so, what did you think about the uh, the death of Trish, the girlfriend character? 
Um, I thought it was a really cool moment. Like, it was like, holy shit, they're going there? Yeah. I, lo- I loved it. Um, you know, again, it's kind of it's, it's a twist. It's one of the mm-hmm. twists. It's right before you find out who Kessler is, right before you fight Kessler. Um, you know, and then when she dies, depending on which uh, side you're going, it's like that good ending kind of breaks your heart a little bit. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. And the bad ending makes you actually feel like shit. Like, <laughs> like first, you're just, you're just playing the game, being a dick, being a, being a god, basically. And then Trish dies, and what, she says something like, I don't forgive you, or... Yeah, if, if uh, you're good, she says she's proud of you um, for everything that you've done. But if you, you're bad, she says you're a disappointment, pretty much. And yeah, and you're... Sa- like, at, at, ashamed of you. It's at that moment where you're just like, I've been... A, I've been a dick this yeah, entire Yeah, it really game. makes you think about And th- that's the beauty of it is it rewards you with power. You ha- are a lot more powerful if you're evil. Mm-hmm. But the, the the morality of it sucks because to gain power in the game, to refill your battery core of your character, your powers, I guess, you have to drain um, electricity from different sources. So like a, a light post or a car. a car or like some sort of like a breaker Sign. panel. Yeah, but you could also do it from humans because we were made of electricity. So you can literally suck the electricity out of someone and kill them to gain power. And I was like, it's that's such a genius move on their part because mm-hmm. it's it's so feeling like I'm you're weak. I'm taking this. Oh, and I, I love the uh, I love one of the little things that you could do uh, to help the city get better is heal them, and his hands literally become yeah the, uh... defibs. <laughs> <laughs> this is great, but yeah, I was so surprised by that. Because it really was a choice, and it really was, like, it made me feel better about myself. Because my first playthrough I played, and it wasn't necessarily a decision early on. That I'm like, or like, I'm like, oh, this is going to be my good one. Right. My thing is, usually when I play these games, I tend to play through as a good person first. And then if, there's the, inter- if the game's good enough, I'll go back and That's play back. That's what I do. But, like, saving people in this, I feel, was more impactful, especially in that moment where it's like, in my head, without skipping a beat, I was like, "This was like, oh, maybe I could be a superhero." I literally, <laughs> I literally thought, without skipping a beat, I'm like, "I have to save them." There's more. There's more doc. She's one person. There's more of them. We need more people. This is a shitty situation. And I'm like, "Oh shit!" This game is turning me into a good person. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make sacrifices. It's like, it's like you said. You feel horrible when you do the bad stuff. It's because I, it's credit to the writing. I was in, impressed with how well this was written. To mm-hmm. where I was like, I, I. I I, it was a bad choice because I was like, I, but I love, she's the person I'm supposed to be with. I'm all in love with. But then I also was like, she's been kind of a bitch to me this whole time. Uh, so, because <laughs> she thinks I killed her sister and all this shit. I mean, you kind of did. Not on purpose, but. <laughs> you opened the bomb. Yeah, Don't open the package if you're a bike messenger. But yeah, it legitimately made me feel like a good person. I was think doing the best thing, and when people were down, I was defibbing them because I was like, I gotta help these people. And then as you're running around, uh, the NPCs will look up and cheer at you, and yeah, if they hate you. They'll throw rocks at you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they'll take like pictures of you and oh man, <laughs> take selfies. Uh, I will say this: as the game progresses and gets harder, and you you you're in different districts, you, that way you have different and en- they're the same enemy types, but they just have different clothes essentially. Yeah. Which is kind of meh, but uh, it's a big game. I understand. With the evil, you do get a new uh, a new enemy group. You get the cops. Technically, yeah, because the cops will shoot at you. Well, um, and isn't there some of them, some of the missions, or this is the second one, where they ask you to blow up a police station? or? Something? I think that's the second one. Yeah, okay. It could be in the first one, too, but it seems generic enough. Yeah. <laughs> Which would be one of the side missions. But the garbage man I hated the most. Oh, yeah. Those guys were fucking... No, don't. I take that back. It was Kessler's dudes from the future, the, the people that made the sphere. You hate those? I, I hate the Dude, garbage they, ones. They, I, was, they were the worst because they had so much armor, it seemed like, to electrocute them. I always felt like uh, the dust men were the tougher ones because they... I, I would say that, yeah, because that's in the middle of the game. By the time you fight Kessler's people on the, by the, where the bomb actually goes off, you're leveled enough where you can handle yourself. Right. Yeah. But, yeah, I hated the Dustman so much. Uh, I want to talk about some of my favorite missions and see if you have some that are a little bit different than mine. Uh, I think the one of the very first missions on the train, that's probably one of the most fun, uh, because they, they rigged up the train 
to be, or you get unlimited power because you're oh, on the, and you're fighting the the. I don't know what you're talking about. The now. hoodie, the one, the red hoodies. I can't remember who they were. But yeah, they're jumping. Sasha is that? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. What but yeah, they're jumping like. up and you're fighting it. That was probably one of my favorite missions early on because you just start getting powerful, and then the game is like, okay, because you could clearly tell it was like towards the end of the first act, right. and like, okay, we've done enough. Have fun. Here's your playground, and you just fucking slaughtering these dudes <laughs> with this batter core, uh, power core, core, and uh, it was really cool. I liked that one a lot. The bus mission was fun too. Yep. Actually, no, I hated the bus mission. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. It was Wh- which, wh- which uh, game is it where you are on the uh, fucking helicopter? Is that one? When you're on the heli- when you're like following the helicopter? No, um, John. You're blowing up the balloons. No, uh, it's in the story mission. John rigs up a. Uh, yeah, it must be the first one then. Yeah, it is. Because John rigs up a helicopter where you're on the platform below, like right below, and he's got it uh, electrified up. So it's like it's like the same thing, but you're on a helicopter. Yeah. I like the mission. I do like those missions because those was the where was the game was like okay you've done enough to play by our rules let's give you unlimited power and just go after these people, mm-hmm. and well the John was even that's the uh, there's also yeah you're blowing up the helicopter because you have the you can rain down lightning from the sky at this point. <laughs> well yeah, but this one I can't remember what you're doing, but you're. It's the balloons, because I hate that fucking mission. That is the balloons. That yeah. is probably the worst mission in the game. I like the helicopter flying part. Did not like the balloons. Dude, that I got... Oh, yeah, I forget. You can make planes with your electricity. I know you made drones kind of thing. Or is that the second game? That's the second game. See, I get the powers mixed up. I know. Um, yeah, but I think, yeah, that, that was, to me, that was exciting. That is when I think it really hooked me. Like, I was already playing it enough, but I think that's where it was like, I need to see this game through, and I was up until like four or five a.m. Yep. playing the game, because it was like, oh, this is what I can be, because that's like the tease. <laughs> that's a, it's a brilliant hook on the game development, because it's like, well, we got it. This is probably eight or nine hours into the game, and they're like, how do we get these people to keep playing? And then, oh, you can do this and rain down lightning on people, and it, it's just insane the progression. But. Oh, how about the uh, the end of John's mission? Where you have oh my god the the last choice you have to make the last choice and if you make the good choice nothing happens I mean John still dies but if you make the bad choice you get I think twenty thousand more experience you can get a lot more powers like upgrade your powers so that's the whole point of him being more powerful yeah and then John evaporates never to be seen again and then if you do the bad ending there's two the what was the option you the option is you open it. Or you let John open it, right? No, the option is you blow it up. Oh, or, or you open it again to get more power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why John evaporates no matter what. Yeah, because yeah, no matter what. But yeah, the, that and that sequence sucks. You're like, this guy works so hard to get back to this and yeah. help, and then I just we've been talking to him, him the entire time. <laughs> he's been helping you the last part of the game, and he's just like, let me murder you. Well, don't worry, he comes back. <laughs> Spoilers for a. Uh, Eight-year-old game. <laughs> and two years from now, we've got to do the 10-year anniversary of that game. It's got to come back. Uh, some of my favorite missions. We talk about Zeke being a fuck-up. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Zeke is just like a bumbling idiot the, idiot the entire time. And the moment that you think he's finally going to be useful when he volunteers the police to help protect people, and he fucks up by running out to shoot people and instead letting Aldrin escape and killing a whole bunch of cops in the... Yeah. She's... That was a fun mission. Yeah, Defe- that one was, yeah. Defending the uh, police station from the dustman. That was fun because there are moments where you have unlimited power and you can do the. At this point, you have that force push thing. So you, you're pushing the missiles back into them and, like, yep. ah, it, game's so good. I love I love this game so much. I also love the boss fight with uh, Aldrich. I think that's his name. Yeah, the, well, Aldrin, you said it earlier. Aldrin, yeah, that's right. I love the name of it. That assault on the, pre- uh, the precinct is called. Alden and Chains. Yeah. I was like, that's a funny name. Was like the, the little, the title. But yeah, his boss fight. I love that one. That's the one. Where he's in a giant mech, basically. Yeah, well, yeah it's like shrapnel. Pe- yeah, and you're way up, and it's in like a junkyard. Yep. Yeah, that was a great mission, too. That was a, that one was fucking hard. That was a vi- like, that's the thing. The boss fights were actually difficult. They were legitimately hard. But it was still, like you're talking about it's with. still beatable. I mean. Because they leveled, they made you powerful enough where you can, again, stand your own and, and. And, and then figure you, it out. When you finally beat it, you you like, you 
you feel it roared. Isn't that the second time you fight him, though? Because don't you fight him in, I think, to put him in no, jail? No, that's the first time, because the second time you fight him on the bridge. No, no yeah, you're right. All, the first time is on the bridge, and then the because, final fight is up in the junkyard. Because right. that's why I was thinking um, about it, because that's one of the things that pisses me off, is um, the, un, the loose thread of Aldrin. Because yeah, they never really... F- when you beat him, he falls into the water... And um, Cole says in the cutscene, a fall from this height can kill a normal man, or would kill a normal man, but Aldrin's a conduit, and yeah. conduits aren't normal. And so, they just kind of brush past that to get you to catch Kessler. Like, yeah, they don't even talk about it in the sequel. Aldrin's gone. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. That's one of the weaker parts of the story is they kind of just leave that loose end. <laughs> I mean... I guess he probably died in the big onslaught of the beast in Empire City in the beginning. I mean, I guess you could call it that. Yeah, and I at this point, it's like you spent so much time in this game because he is in the middle part, and I can't. I just don't know off the top of my head how long the playthrough is, but it's got to be somewhere around like 30, 40 hours. And at that point, you're far in this game, and and when you get to the when you're fighting him, it's just like. And if you do the side missions, things like the birds, which again, that's my least favorite uh, part of least favorite power acquiring um, the drone challenge. thing. I or? hate that. What because um, uh, Kessler he put uh, little tapes on birds, and you have oh, to yeah. go and. Psh. However, that's in the second game. No, it's in the first one too. That's the dead drop. They do something in the in the first one because that's how you find out what happens to uh, to Sasha, because you have to get all of the tapes and then you find out that yeah, then they're just the satellite drops, the dead drops. Is that it? Because I think the birds in the second game. I think you're right. See, it's those little like the little <laughs> minutia things that like the little side mission things. But I think yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I think those are just the dead drops in the satellite. Which is why she's in love with Cole because Kessler's Cole. She's yeah, in love with no, Kessler. and that's so. Fucking good, which I did not pick up until the second time when I was like, yep. "Oh right, they're together." And uh, yeah. yep, yep, you definitely. And her true story is tragic, man. She's essentially a heroin addict mm-hmm. because she's addicted to the the. It's like it's not heroin, but it's like some sort of black thing that came with her powers. The tar, I think that's what they call it. And you're literally ripping the syringes out of her body when you're fighting her, yep. and yeah, and then and you don't even think about that. But that's the tragic story of like. She's getting killed from her lover that cool. doesn't know that he loves her because we're in a time paradox. <laughs> and the really cool thing about it, though, is um, you wouldn't get that story if you didn't play the little side guy. If you didn't catch the dead drops, yeah, you would never find. Well, in, in the fighting, she tells you how much. You'll, I mean, it's kind of hinted you. at, but you, the yeah. first time I played it before, it's implied, yeah. Before I did the dead drops, I kept thinking about uh, how this woman was just crazy. Like, for whatever reason, she's just in love with me. You find out Kessler did experiments on her and all that shit. I thought she was just in love with another power guy. You know, she saw a guy with powers and she... So, that's what I thought was really cool. And I think they do another... I think the second one is John. Or John does something in the first one. Yeah. And... Oh, another thing that they never... A thing they never fixed. The Moya thing. The, the agent that's talking to you throughout the whole game, John is like, she's not a real agent, she's lying, blah, blah, blah. And then nothing happens from that? They actually do resolve that. In the second game, right? Uh, no. In the comic. Oh. <laughs> do it in the game, dude. Or do it in the second game. Figure out which loose... And that's the, I do think that's the problem where the story of Zeke, Trish, Cole, and Kessler, all of them working together, that is the clearly the crux of the story. Right. But they also had to fill out a game in a world, so they're like, well, we have to create these other like sub-bosses. And while uh, Sasha was good, I like Sasha's, Alden, like you said, I don't like how that ended because there's really no resolve. I and mean, it was kind of cool, you know, like a cliffhanger, leaving it up. and then, But they don't even bring him in the sequel. Yeah, I was going to say, you could have easily have killed him or had him, had a spite him in the sequel or, yeah. or even did a, a DLC. They didn't do any DLC till the second one. I, you know, I think I've actually played through that game 
three times. I've done it way too many to count. I just, I don't. It's it's amazing. It it blows my mind how good it was. It, it's something that is this good as a superhero game as an original idea is insane. Where you know we talk about how great the superhero the superhero genre is. It's because we have those licensed characters. We have the Batman or the Spider Man games. Where this was like we're doing our own thing, and it's fucking weird. It is a weird world they make in this because they do such a weird. It's parts of it are believable. And yeah. then you have the Kessler part where he comes back in time, where it's a little weird. But like, well, but even that they kind of, they kind of explain it like in a scientific way. They explain that he spends all of his money on because he creates the race sphere, right? Yeah, uh, but he spends all his money on getting scientists, starting the first suns, and that's why he's able to travel back in time. And they explain like some other sciencey things. Well, the um, race sphere, yeah, it's it's designed to when you turn it on to drain the life of the people around you that aren't strong. Like, because we don't know how someone's a conduit. It's a random selection. It takes the life, uh, the life force out of it. Yeah, it takes the life force of those other people and injects it into you to create you into a conduit. And, they re- and that's what I love about the second game is they really go in and on that. And they really, because you, you have co-op missions with other super higher people. But, I love that. Um, and they really go into that in Second Son, too. Um, yeah. Second Son's a weird game. It's not good. It's not as good as the, the, it's beautiful. the other two. It really isn't. But it's a beautiful game. But that's the only thing that really like stood out to me because there are some weird stuff like that black tar stuff for Sasha, and then Alden's is just funny because they literally just made this man into a conduit, and he was just like this homeless garbage person. No, who, Alden was a a prodigy. Oh yeah, he was a genius. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. And he and then they become so, yeah the then homeless garbage yeah and then they're like oh yeah well he's a conduit now so he's the king of the trash people the <laughs> dustman as they like to call themselves oh that sequence is bad like and that's the thing too with Alden his intro is fucking badass where he just throws a goddamn bus with his mind and you're <laughs> like oh I gotta fight this thing yep. oh meanwhile where the hell's Kessler <laughs> <laughs> you know and like his intro is because that sequence is so you're going to hospital and you're trying to save these people and this dude just is like eh, wipes <laughs> his hand away and just throws a fucking bus and you're like ah oh, god damn it and then going back to uh the tragedy of these characters alton's actually kind of a tragic story too because he was forced to study all these mind things and attempt to i don't know be smart i can't remember and uh his parents forced him to do it and all this and then he finally gets yeah, and it's insane. Like that's the thing. The more we talk about it, the more I realize how good of a villain Kessler really is, mm-hmm. and how it might seem a little hokey. But it, 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 to me, the ending is perfect because of that idea of duality. Where of course you have to kill yourself from the future because you become a maniac, <laughs> right? <laughs> because you're like, I fucked up and I couldn't stop this thing, and I'm going to take everything from you. So you are a weapon, and I'm like. What? <laughs> that's oh, yeah. crazy. Then you find out he had a family and whatnot, and he tried to run. Right. That, that's how they died. Yeah, exactly. Because he got married. Yeah, he got married to the to Trish, this character that you've been they've been talking about so much. Well, yeah, because the entire the entire um, game, you're trying to if you're picking the good one at least, you're trying really hard to make up to Trish for killing her sister, and I obviously at first she's not having it, but she's still using you. To do health yeah. things. And yeah, you get medical missions if you're good. And if you're bad, you don't really get those, I don't think. Yeah, and you, you, you're, again, it just, in my head, just from doing all that medical stuff and working with her, I was defibbing people. I was trying to do my best to, to make the city better. Right. Helping uh, people out. And this is kind of my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Technically, you did tell yourself to open the package, so technically, no matter way, which way you look at it, it's yeah. your fault. Yeah. Time travel. Time travel. But yeah, the I just love that, just the way he does that, and with like, yeah, I did, killed her, because she's gonna, mm-hmm. you're going to be weak. You don't have anything to hold you back now. And then that's and that's the way the, mo- the whole thing ends, is him saying, the beast is coming, and I'm, and I'm ready, or I'll be ready, I think. Right. Well, and, and it just zooms in on his eyes with lightning bolts, and I'm like, Fuck yeah. like in the good ending, um, it talks about how today they all love him, but one day he's going to fail and they're going to hate him or something. Yeah. And then he talks about how he's going to be ready for the beast. And in the bad ending, 
He doesn't even give a fuck about the Beast because he thinks he's the baddest. Yeah. The baddest character. I'm going to rule over this city. Mm-hmm. Which is funny because you lose, you lose Empire City in the first five minutes. Yeah, I know. That, and that, to me, is funny about the sequel. It's just like, remember that game? <laughs> it's all changed. <laughs> uh, what, what is the fake New Orleans? The what? The fake New Orleans that they make in the second game. Oh, I can't remember. Here, hold on. Because I want, I, I'm gonna fuck it up and say San Denis, and that is Red Dead Redemption Two. That is not infamous. Uh, they, they, even, they, they say New Orleans right on the back. But why? It's new something. Anyway, um, what did you think of the city of Empire City? I felt like New Marais. It was new Marais. Um, which is clearly uh, New Orleans. Yeah, I, I, I didn't really feel a lot of an attachment to Empire City. I think it was just a bland city for me to play around in. It was modeled off their New York. Right, but yeah, it was just a generic city. The, that's not what the game is about. The game is about right. saving people. And New Marais is definitely a, a more diverse and more fun environment. Yeah. You know, like when you have to fight in the swamp, and that's fucking hard because, you know, water bad. <laughs> so you have to like get into certain spots to use your... Uh, use, like you have to get on pretty much like lily pads, pretty much to shoot at people. <laughs> um, yeah, that that is something interesting to me because their inspiration was Batman DMZ, which is this same storyline as The Dark Knight Rises, where Gotham is sectioned off and quarantined. And while I like the premise of this, we're stuck here together. We're going to run into each other, and I'm going to end this kind of thing. But I think what makes it effective in Batman DMZ or The Dark Knight Rises is because Gotham is a character in and of itself. Right. And where that's the one part I think it kind of wavered off for me with Empire City where it's like, okay, clearly this is just a playground and I'm going I'm going to save these people, but this is just a thing for me to f- have fun in. I didn't have an emotional attachment. Where New Marais, I remember it. I forgot the name, but I remember <laughs> specific things in that. because that's new, right? Yeah. <laughs> and there's specific things in the second game that make me like remember it and be like, oh, this is something new and fresh, and this is a character to the story. Other than, did they ever explain in the first one, uh, Cole's parkour? Yeah, he was he when when you first go in the sewers, they explain that he was able to do it because he was a rock climber. That's why there's so much parkour in it. Yeah. Also, you have to keep in mind the first Assassin's Creed and this, I think around this time, the second one, I could be wrong. But the first Assassin's Creed had already come out, so everybody was like, ooh, we got to put parkour in our games because <laughs> that's what the kids like. Well, because I know in the se- uh, second one, when they talk about Numeray, he explains that uh, when the flood just came out, he was doing a lot of parkour. Um, yeah, before all this stuff happened, yeah. Right, and even Zeke started doing some of it. They, yeah, they explain it in both games, which is... Only thing that you see in video games where it's like we have to make sure people know the exposition because a lot of times people will just pick up the sequel. <laughs> right. Because, which is really great about video games versus movies, where almost every time the sequel is better than the first. Almost every time. Right. Not in this case. I'm, I'm someone that actually likes Infamous 1 more than Infamous 2. But ah, Infamous 2 is my favorite. I think. Gameplay wise, mechanically, Infamous Two plays like a dream. It's insane how good that the game co-op is. missions are pretty fucking awesome. And I, I love the story. I love I, see the story kind of lost me in the second game. See, I love the story because I love the change of hey, change of characters from sorry, dogs barking characteristics from Cole. Like in this one, he's kind of like, well, yeah, Trish is dead, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> And he's more like he's more like Spider Man. He like once he shows up and says, uh, uh, "What you doing about swamp?" And then the girl that's helping him just goes, "Think about skinny dip," and he goes, "Ooh, don't let me stop you." Yeah, I I think I like I like Cole more in the second game as well. I, because I agree with you, that's it's it's cool to see him embrace that. This is my life now. These are the things I had, mm-hmm. and I think that's a moment where he's like, "I don't have to be Kessler." I gave myself a second chance, so I'm still gonna have be this powerful person, but I'm not gonna lose my humanity. 
Unless, of course, you go the evil direction where right. like, you don't give a shit. And I, I do like the fact that you can import it. So I kept the same, so you can keep that same storyline going if you want to use your good save and play through and be canon. And, I think I did do that. And that's the way I look at it. My first playthrough is canon. And then the second playthrough is me just having fun. But Could you, Couldn't you do that somehow with the, uh, the, the second son? Wasn't there a way? I don't think so because it's a different character. Well, so. a different character and a different uh, platform, different machine, different console. <laughs> Which is funny because you could tell it was a launch title because it uses the stupid gimmicks on the controller. Well, and it's packaged. Well, no, but I'm just saying, like, the, when you're playing the game, gameplay wise, it works oh, where you have yeah, to I'd... shake your controller to shake up the the spray paint, and then you use the touchpad to, uh, to actually spray paint the thing and then you have this you can hear things in the speaker that you couldn't hear on the game itself and like you can clearly tell it's playing with gimmicks where in these other two weren't I'm really glad we got away from the swipey thing it's used in yeah it's very rarely used I mean I'm sure there's still a couple of games that use it but no yeah but they rarely used for anything other than to change a camera angle or something <laughs> <laughs> um before we wrap up uh, would you do you want to see another infamous game or are you just would, happy where it is I would love to see another one because first off I do not like how they ended it with, with Second Son I don't want Second Son to be the sour taste in your mouth kind right of. I want one more I mean I haven't played the DLC yet for Second Son because you play as the graffiti girl or whatever her power yeah the neon, neon powered person and there's one where Zeke is trying to find uh any trace of what happened to Cole, so he could still be out there. Um, I don't think it ends with him finding Cole. I don't know. No. But it's just funny because spoilers again for an <laughs> eight year old game. Uh, but it's so cool that in those first two games, Cole dies in both of them. We need to get going. Um, yep. Running out of time. But I. Honestly, as much as I would like to see a new game in the series, I kind of like where... I mean, I understand that if... Uh, where you have an idea of... This leaves a sour taste in my mouth. This is the last thing. But you can still look at it this way. Cole had a perfect story in two games, and I was pretty happy with that. And I don't need anything else, you know? <laughs> that being said, I'm not going to tell you I'm not going to play an infamous whatever they would call it but another game <laughs> infamous third son if they made an infamous three it's a direct sequel and can somehow continue uh cole's story i would buy that day one well i mean because i'm wondering how the fuck are they gonna do that you can yeah you can make a, a trilogy out of the first one you can pretend that second son never happened i mean look at halloween look at terminator yeah yeah hollywood does it all the time uh so you could do that and I don't know. I, I just feel like it ended fine with me with uh, Infamous 2. Like, I thought it was really cool that the uh, ultimate end to the Cole story was him killing himself to to save everyone. Yeah. Doing the ultimate sacrifice or being the ultimate monster, which, again, if you play evil again, this is brutal. <laughs> oh, God. I hate that. That ending is it's just awful because you just see your hand and you're like, I, I can't move. <laughs> you're just murdering people. You're just murdering people. Like, you, you pull a Danny. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I like I said, I I love the franchise, and it, I I'm very thankful for the time that I had with it. I, it was it was something that I like I said in the moment didn't realize how much I'd love it. When ten years later, I'm still talking about it, and uh, yeah, it's a good game to share with your friends. Yeah, because the first like uh, I'd have to give the second game another shot. I only played the second game once. I want to play the DLC for the second game. Oh, when he's a, with the vampire. the vampire. Festival of Blood. And Festival Zeke is just trying to tell a story. Yeah, it's fake. <laughs> <laughs> it's all just Zeke fucking around. All right, thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Jake Williams Show. Do you enjoy Infamous? Can you believe it's been 10 years? I feel really old that it's been 10 years since that game's come out. Um, I'm noticing that more and more because my yeah. last episode was talking about The Matrix, and that is 20 years old. Yeah, <laughs> think about that. Jesus, uh, that was five years old when that movie came out. Jesus. Oh, boy. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Follow us on Facebook, Loud and Opinionated. 
uh, on Twitter at Loud Opinionated and on Instagram Loud Opinionated Brand. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. I don't know what I'm going to do next week. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to figure it out as it goes. I don't even fucking know what I'm going to do tomorrow. You're telling me, man. You're telling <laughs> me. Thanks for, uh, thanks for listening. I've told them three times now. Be loud and be proud. <laughs>